Hello guys, we are back at it with round three of the PPG. We have a very interesting matchup coming for you guys, but first let's tell you about these imposter PPG tokens that we're giving away every round. Go ahead and make sure you guys uh, type in the chat so you can get entered in for the one this round, and then we'll reach out to you about sending it to you. We, yep. have, a, we have a great match. Austin, do you want to tell them who we have coming up? Oh, uh, we have Kamel, and I'm not going to lie, I don't remember who the second guy so is. So we have <laughs> the Kamal Crooks. And uh, Melvin Torres, they both know each other. They're both very good players. Um, it's nice to see Kamal come out here and play. Mm -hmm. uh, I test with him a lot. Melvin is playing, uh, I know he's playing the Zoo Eldritch deck. I don't think he's playing the Dogmatica cards, and I know Kamal's mm -hmm. playing Virtual World. So yeah. first look at Virtual World in the new format, at least at this tournament. So that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, Virtual World being a very good deck. The deck that you said is going to win this tournament. Yeah, I think Virtual World's going to win this tournament. We don't see a lot of Dytron, which was uh, Austin's pick to win. So yeah. let's see what deck's going to come out on top here. Maybe if Virtual World goes down, I think the Trap decks are better. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so this is where we can see if Melvin's playing any of those blowout trap cards that are better versus VFD. And like we were talking about earlier, just summoning a Zoo and going into Dryden through a VFD is good enough sometimes yeah. to at least let you play. Especially if he's playing no Dogmatica, that means he has more traps in his deck. You see Ice Dragon's Prison, TT. Yeah, those will be cards that will just give him an edge in this match, especially if Kamal goes first and summons out VFD because the Dogmatica engine has a hard time playing through the VFD 100%. Yeah. I mean, if we see a TT, it's going to be insane. Yeah, I'd really like to see a lot of good old trap cards so we could see how Kamal navigates his way playing through them because the Virtual World deck does a decent job at playing through back row, but it can't always do it. Yeah. They can't always play through the back row, but they can almost always have a follow-up. Yeah, you want to make sure you set up a follow-up at least if you're playing into back row because if you just start throwing away your cards and you get TT'd and you just have no way to play post that, it's awful. Like, yeah. Sometimes you just can't top deck into a name in the one or two span you need. Mm -hmm. Getting like a, like the Ching Long Engrave, it's so strong for yeah. a follow-up. And then it's important. Sometimes I prioritize getting a second one in there because some mm -hmm. people like to Omega back the first one. Yeah. So that, that's come up for me, and just uh, when they have like access to Crow or Hakuero where they want to shotgun it, things like that. And yeah. our match is getting started, and it does look like Melvin won the die roll. Can't see exactly what's in his hand. So I see a trap card, three spells, and a monster. Let's really see what we got. We got Cosmic. Oof, it's looking like he's going to set two and pass. Yeah, I saw Cosmic and Wakero in hand. I think he has droplets in his hand as well because I saw him set two spells. Mm. So discarding the Aquero for the droplets would be nice. We see desires. Best that's, start. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that's very good. Drawing two cards for free is always nice, especially in a deck like Virtual World that doesn't care about any yeah. of the cards that get banished. Really. Mm -hmm. They play three of everything, and then Nian can also just shuffle back. Yeah, Nian's such a good card. Being able to not only put back your main deck cards that got banished, or you could just banish your extra deck cards with Shenshen mm -hmm. and just reuse them. Yeah, or even put back Shenshen. Yeah, putting back Shenshen's crazy, but Chucha can do that as well. Yeah. You're going to see a city here. So this is what you want as the Virtual World player. You want to see a draw card, you want to see city, and now any name really will get you started. Yeah. Look, we do know that Melvin has the Cosmic, so that's going to be strong, especially when he reveals a name, because not only is he going to take the trap away, he's going to make him waste one of his reveals. Yeah. The Cosmic's going to be really nice. Yeah, and this is a good one to stop, too, because he can't even normal summon this after the fact. Yeah. So we know this card's just going to be dead in his hand unless he wants to pitch it for a Quinglong later. Mm -hmm. So now, does he have a normal summon or something else to keep going? That's the real question. Normal summon would be big, but now a card like Quinglong or Foolish Burrow Goods doesn't get him as far as he'd want to because he needs two names to continue if he has a normal summon. Yeah. The Cosmic getting a lot of value this format. We're just going to see a set one and pass. So this could be a lot of things. It could be another Chuche. He could just be setting a card as a bluff as well. Mm -hmm. Melvin started off slow, so Kamal knows he really doesn't have to overcommit to the board, and he can just try again next turn with Lily. Since he didn't lose the card or anything, he made just Melvin use the Cosmic. Yeah, and also him not being able to use the Droplet, getting rid of the walk hero to get to his engine there. He's making it so he's still not doing anything. Yeah, Kamal knows he's fine because Melvin didn't start, so he has to draw into a starter. Mm -hmm. And Kamal might have a way to stop that starter, and that's why he feels so comfortable. Yeah. It looks like he drew a monster. Oh, I think he's using Lord Effect. Yeah, discarding droplets to get Send rid of Chuchi. Chuchi. Okay, that, that was good. 
Now he's going to use Lord Effect. Oh, it looks like he <laughs> opened all three droplets. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, so we see he didn't really open Ideal, but now that he has access to Lord, he can start his engine because the Hokuero is going to be really nice now. Yeah. Uh, Kamal especially not knowing it's coming, and then the Hokuero is just going to start floating. Yeah. Very smart of him to not send the Walkero there. Yeah, I, I think that was really smart because then he wastes one of his disruptions. Yeah. A lot of people would have used it there as, like, the discard or something. Yeah, so he went ahead and passed. So he didn't set the Hokuero, so maybe the Hokuero was set the turn before. Yeah. Not 100% sure. And there we go. We see Kamal has a normal summon. He's going to use Kieran on that, and it resolves. Wow. So let's see if Kamal has a third trap still left in his deck because he's already gone through two of them, and he did desires. Yeah. So it looks like he's not sending the trap, which Melvin should know is a sign that he either has the trap in his hand or it's banished. Mm -hmm. He does have a Chuchi engraved, though. Yeah, and he does have the Hakuero, so th this is nice, getting rid of the Quinglong. This yeah. is really big, actually, forcing Kamal to have another name to extend here. Does he have the name, though? So a cool play... It at least in my list, because I do play Fan Fan, would be to banish the trap, making the Nine a level six, swinging over the Hoquero, and then you banish the Lord and the Hoquero, and make yeah. a Zeus. So at that point, you clear him of his whole Eldritch engine and just end on Zeus. Yeah, that'd be extremely good here. Yeah, like, even though Kamal doesn't have a lot of resources available to him, that would just get him so far ahead, because he clears the resources of his opponent, and if he wants to leave Fan Fan face up, it also floats. Yeah. So his opponent is forced to Lord Effect it to send it to the graveyard, if not any other way he clears it. Yeah, a lot of people cut Fen Fen from the deck, so there's just a chance that he doesn't play it. Yeah, so the, it's a very unique card. I personally enjoy it for like the control matchups for Banishing Lord, because it's not a deck that can have the luxury of playing Ice Dragon's Prison to get rid of Lord that way, mm -hmm. or Hoquero. So I think you have to deal with it in one form or another, especially since VFD is not very good versus it. Yeah. We see him making a level 6, or rank 6. M7. M7. So this does a similar job, I would think. It's going to give him an extra resource if he either wants to add back a card to his hand. Yeah, he's just going to detach and add back the Neon and get stopped. Oh, so he probably got Ghost Belt. Yeah. That, that's the card that he most likely activated, and that's really strong. So Melvin had two ways to interrupt Kamal, and the next turn he can just go into Link Spider into a follow-up. Yeah. Or he just swings over the card, so it's just a follow-up anyway. Yeah, the M7 is adding some pressure, though. Yeah, and it's also going to turn into a Zeus now, most likely, so it's going to apply even more pressure. Yeah. Was it actually worth turning in the Zeus here? So it depends which way you want to look at it. Since the Hoquero is going to turn into a Sanguine, so you know that's not an interruption that's going to be prevalent on your turn. Yeah. So you're only playing around their top deck if you make the Zeus. Yeah. And at that point, if you know his deck, you probably think his only real top deck would have to be a rat or a way to zoo a zoo monster. Mm-hmm. So, what else could Kamal have in hand here? Is it just hand traps? He could have hand traps. He could just have dead copies of Nyan or maybe multiple Lilies. So, that's really the issue with the virtual world when it draws multiple of the same name because mm -hmm. you can't really play with those. Yeah. And since we know he only used one extender the first turn, we know he doesn't have multiple names in his hand yeah. of different ones. So, he could just have multiple Lilies. His desires could have just been bad, and he doesn't mm -hmm. have ways to play past that. And that's why he wanted access to the Nyan as well. Yeah. Summoning the Zeus in the extra monster zone is good, since you're never going to be summoning a Link in the deck anyhow. Yeah, this is a deck that just abuses all six zones for free. Yeah. And it looks like Melvin drew a back row. Uh, not the card he needed, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely not. I don't even think you set it at this point. You just set the Sanguine and pass. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty good if Kamal doesn't have anything. Yeah, if Kamal can't apply pressure past the Zeus... The the Sanguine is going to carry you because it'll get you to a conk at one point, which will clear the Zeus because it only has one effect, and then you can start sending your back row. Yeah. Or we like, don't know what his extra deck's on either. He could summon, like, an Ash from deck, go in the Needle Fiber combo. Yeah, he could be playing, like, an Access Code uh, package if he wanted to with, like, Valor in his deck if he thought yeah. that was necessary just to have an extra way to apply pressure. We see Foolish Burial Goods here. It's just another way to start, but Kamal still lacks, like, an extra monster. Because even if he searches for 
a name like Lulu, he still needs to have a way to get a virtual world card face up. And we knew he wasn't able to do that last turn. Yeah. Well, he could also, like, normal summon a hand trap like Bell or Ash just to get Neon on board. Yeah, if he does have a level 3 hand trap, that would be really nice. Yeah. Okay, making sure he discards a card, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do. There we go, exactly, hey. like you said, normal summon Ash. So this is going to be really strong because not only does he get access to the virtual world, he also gets, like, a free level 3 to either synchro summon with or to make breaksword. Mm -hmm. And see, there we go, he had another yeah. copy of Lili. So his hand was just clogged up with cards he couldn't really use. And Melvin's going to concede. He sees the writing on the wall is that Kamal's just too far ahead in advantage. Yeah, he saw the play with the normal summon Ash. Yeah, and he knew to just hold his resources when his Lili got stopped and that his opponent couldn't apply much pressure the following turn. Yeah. Wow. It, I think it was played great. Um, Melvin just unfortunately didn't draw too well that game, so he, yeah. he couldn't really do much besides his little Eldritch plays. Hopefully he gets to see more of his engine, and he gets to go first again, most likely, for game two. Yeah, hopefully he gets to see Azu this game. Yeah, uh, we, we've had a lot of issues with the Eldritch decks just seeing their engines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So I don't know if that's uh, telling for anything upcoming in the format that the deck just maybe has consistency issues or anything like that. Yeah, well, like the Eldritch cards are so bad and good at the same time because they're trap cards, so they're very slow. And they take a while to get rolling. But, like, the cards that are with them is what makes the deck very strong. Exactly. So, like, the Eldritch engine is just, like, that extra push. Yeah. That, like, if an engine's not good enough on its own, like, Invoked, it's a mm -hmm. strong engine. It's a one card, like, negate every time. But it's, like, just summoning a Mechaba and passing is not reliable. Yeah. So, like, if not. I can go summon Mechaba, set Sanguine, set Conquistador, have a Hand Trap, and, like, Alistair. Like, mm -hmm. I have a follow-up. I have access to, like, a pop. I have an Omni Negate if, like, board wipes, things like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's, like... It just complements a lot of engines very well, especially since it doesn't take a normal summon. Yeah. It's very unique in that way. Yeah, people also really like the Eldritch engine being able to grind very well. Yeah, the the grind game of the Eldritch deck is really good, but like you were saying, it sometimes takes a couple turns for it to get rolling since if you activate a card, you're like a turn behind with its graveyard effect. Yeah. So you have to know when to use them, when to not, and like wait on it. Yeah. Like if you open up Walk Hero, it's going to take a while for your engine to get going. Yeah, if your only way is one of the Golden Lands, it takes two turns to like get to Lord, but like at least you're getting to Lord. Yeah. It's not horrible to draw, it just takes a while. Yeah, you definitely rather draw Sanguine, or you 100% would rather draw, like, Cursed Eldon. Like, those are the two mm -hmm. better cards to start with, 100%. Oh. oh, yeah, if I could start with Cursed every game with Eldritch, I would. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> just the best, or probably the best card to start with, 100%. I wouldn't yeah. say the best card, because they all have, like, crazy effects. Oh, yeah, you so need every single one for the Yeah, Victor Conquistador word. is really good, because it just gives you outs to, like, almost every card in the format. And mm -hmm. then Hoquero is really good, since the format's so grave-centric. Grave Scarlet's needed. Oh, not yeah. Obviously. <laughs> you can't play without... I think if Scarlet wasn't a card, that deck would just be unplayable. Like, mm. Black Awakening's decent, but... Yeah, not Yeah, I can't enough. Black Awakening <laughs> on my opponent's turn exactly. and have them not know the Lord's coming. Mm -hmm. Which I think is another good thing. Like, not searching your Eldritch cards, I think, is what makes them so much stronger at times. Yeah. Because your opponent can't really play around them because you have to play around, like, the Zoo Monsters or the Hand mm -hmm. Traps. And then, like, they can key store you and you're like, wow, I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't have... I had TTT in my hand and they didn't dry it and so now like mm -hmm. my play isn't going through the way I thought it would so it's going to be interesting to see if Kamal decides to keep in the TTTs now yeah we I don't think he will maybe yeah. like going second it's not bad going just second's not awful but since Bunny Blast got a lot more popular, it could just be in your deck because if you Quing Long target the Dryden, they Bunny Blast it, you can just go Talents either take and you force the Dryden right there, you make a yeah. Zeus, or you can go ahead and draw two cards. So, like, mm -hmm. it's doing essentially the same thing because they never want to put the Quing Long in your graveyard. Does he know that his opponent is on Zoo, though? I believe so, but he could just be expecting, like, the Eldritch matchup and it just be pure Eldritch. Yeah. If I see Droplets, I would suspect yeah, you're with a follow-up sure. engine because the Eldritch deck doesn't abuse Droplets as well as other decks. Yeah. You just activate Droplets and pass. Yeah, exactly. It'd be, like, activate Droplets, send three trap cards, set three more trap cards, mm, and exactly. fizz, and pass. The Zoo deck can at least go, like, Droplets, Zoo, clear the board, mm -hmm. set Eldritch cards. So there's definitely a... There's definitely some thought of it could be either Eldritch or it could just, like, be invoked as well. Like, you just didn't see a sublim. Yeah. It could literally be any form of Eldritch. Mm-hmm. For sure. Just not pure Eldritch. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a lot of pure Eldritch being played. Yeah. 
I mean, there could be like the sixty card. Yeah, with, like just but a little bit. I wouldn't of engines. consider that pure. I consider that just like a pile. Yeah, it's a mm. pile of just good cards, and we're at the point where like you use as long as your deck has a lot of good cards in it, they'll work. Yeah. And you like try to limit the bricks in your deck. A lot of those engines that are really strong, they do have bricks, which are the drawbacks. So you try to play sixty cards to mitigate that issue. Yeah. I think, like, the 60-card Eldritch decks are so cool to see. Yeah, I'm a big fan of 60 cards in general because you get to space out your bricks, play multiple engines that either achieve the same thing or do different things but the same way. Yeah. So it lets you just play new cards. It lets you play cards you wouldn't typically play also. Yeah. So Melvin started off with the zoo this game. Great to see. Yeah, way better than last game already. Yeah, so what are you searching for? Are you searching for a Ram Ram or are you searching for Bunny Blast? Bunny Blast, yeah. 100%. So, he should be searching for Bunny Blast, mm -hmm. and oh, so his hand might not be too good, or it might be just full of zoo monsters that he's searching for Thoroughblade. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be bad if he went Thoroughblade pitch the Bunny Blast, though, because yeah. pu putting the Thoroughblade and the Bunny Blast under it's really good, because mm -hmm. that way it's at 2200, 23 with the tanky, so it can't even be swung over. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he just doesn't have a whole bunch of zoos. Hopefully he doesn't get hand trapped here. Yeah. That would be like a ogre or a gamma, gamma there. Yeah. Yeah, gamma would be game. Gamma would have been even crazier because he doesn't see like the draw and he knows he has another zoo in hand, so he has yeah. three like disruptions maximum. So he's gonna start going for some zoo XYZs. Yeah, and he's just making sure his uh Dryden's getting kinda beefy. Making sure he plays around nib, doing it under four. Yeah. You can tell the zoo players that, like, really play around cards and the ones that kind of, like... Play in everything. Yeah, because there's some zoo players that are like, oh, Nib's bad versus my deck, so I'll just play into it because it shouldn't be in their deck. And you yeah. can just sometimes get punished for it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there would be a Nib in Camilla's deck this I game. I don't think so either. I think you definitely side them out. Yeah, I would have sided it out. So we see one set. So hopefully this is a real trap or sanguine. This is what, yeah. what I would hope. It could be D-Barrier. D-Barrier is, like, a really good card, especially. We've seen it in Zoo before. Yeah. Like, stopping your opponent from Synchro Summoning. It limits their options, so your opponent probably has to go for a Zeus play. Yeah. A Cosmic set, too, could be very good. A Cosmic is always really good versus Virtual World going second. Yeah. So the Bunny Blast just wouldn't matter. They didn't get to equip it. Yeah, that could probably it. be why he searched for the Thoroughblade as well to get a draw. We see Kamal's hand. I see a Quan Loon in his hand, two monsters, and two more spells. He yeah. might just have multiple of the same spells because he looks a little uh, puzzled at his hand. Or maybe he's trying to figure out good. the play. Or it could mm -hmm. be that good. I mean, he set one and passed, so maybe he just doesn't have a way to play. Yeah. Like, he has all the, sp the spells and traps for Virtual World and just no monster to dump. And that can happen. Yeah. Man, that's actually wild that he just set one and passed. Oh, if this is Cosmic or Sanguine, I think this is just insane. Okay, so this is decent. Yeah. It gets him access to Lord, which is like if he draws Eldland, if he draws like any other piece of the engine, it'd be really strong right now. Yeah. I want to see how much he commits the board to like playing through back row because Kamal could have just sided in Torrential and been like, he's not going to mm -hmm. respect it. That's how I clear my Zeus. Yeah. Maybe. Like I I've heard that going on around like just having trap cards versus Zoo. Mm hmm. Just not expecting it at all. Yeah, exactly. They, they wouldn't be playing around it. Mm hmm. I think you just put Dryden in attack, swing for the 21, and then make Link Spider and try to pass turn. You don't want to commit too much to your field. Yeah. We well, may as well switch the Conquista. Well, yeah. Or... You get in the extra damage 100%. Or he can make Link Spider because it would be a thousand. Yeah. But then, like, TT would give him less damage, but. Yeah. I guess he really is playing around TT like hard then. He's yeah, just if not he just go, spider. if he just goes swing first, it, I think it's also a very like discipline play because it's showing he doesn't want to lose to just any card outright. Yeah, it's very interesting to see how he navigates this turn because he could just try and commit and go for like a chalk and I'm play to bring back his dragon and then go for a Zeus play and then play into cards, or he can just go swing swing make Link Spider. Get his plays rolling and be like, if you can't play, I'm not going to do anything extra. Yeah. Like, his one disruption should be enough to get him through the opening turn of Virtual World if they would just went set one and pass. Yeah. Seems like he's just attacking here. The fact that he had to think for a minute there shows that he's a good player. Yeah, he wants to make sure that, like, 
he's not playing into anything. He's like, okay, this could be X card. It could be torrential. It could be D barrier. It could yeah. be a bunch of these things, mm-hmm. like a bunch of cards. It could be like a set evenly, even mm-hmm. if you wanted to like overcommit or something like that. And he probably is aware that like evenly storm or like cards that are starting to see more play since trap decks are more popular. Yeah. He doesn't want to commit to those. So he's just going to try to pop his conquistador. Okay. This shows even more commitment to playing around like, Trap cards. He probably did this in the M phase as well to play around Baylor. I doubt it'll be in Kamal's deck, but yeah. just a correct play to do either way. Mm-hmm. And then summoning the the Zeus. So I think this is a good play because the Zeus does have two effects, and it'll just one for one with everything else. Yeah. He's gonna get crowed on the Conquistador. I think that's a good trade on Melvin's end because he doesn't really need the Lord right now. He has a Zoo engine going, and yeah. that's clearly putting in work. Mm-hmm. I think that was a forced crow, though. If you don't do it, then you're just too far behind. Oh, 100%. Kamal's forced to do it there, but he's already behind to the point where I think the Zeus is just going to carry this game. Yeah. And we're most likely going to see game three. Melvin probably has two to three hand traps in his hand. Maybe another zoo monster as a follow-up. Mm-hmm. We do know that he has a city, though. Yes. So this city can get his play started. And if Melvin does have a hand trap, but Kamal has triple tactics in his hand, just taking the Zeus is... Game changing. Yeah. Take the Zeus and put his own Zeus. Yeah, over. exactly. Like that play is really good. I really wonder what Kamal set is though. It could be Imperm. Yeah, definitely not Chuchi. Oh, okay. Just in case his opponent wanted to uh get greedy and yeah, pop it. And Zeus during the end phase or yeah. anything like that. That's a smart play. So the issue is let's see if Kamal has a name. Or, like, maybe any other way to banish a virtual world card so you could at least chucha his uh, Quinglong. Yeah. Well, he, he's thinking about Zeus in here. So, I don't know if this is correct. If because you don't do it, then Zeus is just Yeah, Zeus is negated. Alive. But if you saw Kamal couldn't play the last turn, mm-hmm. he might just not have a monster. You're putting him on his top deck at that point. Yeah. And if you have a hand trap, I think you can reliably do that. Okay, so it doesn't look like he has Ash. I see a nib in his hand, I think a bunny blast, and a thorough blade yeah. inside Melvin's hand. I saw the thorough blade too. So this nib is going to put in a lot of work because Kamal can't afford to play around the nib mm-hmm. while trying to clear the board at this point. Yeah. So he's going to add a Lulu. Unless, like we were saying, triple tactics would still be really good here. Yeah. Because then he can do the Zeus play, and that's a safe play that he can make, and he doesn't have to play into nib and then try and play the following turn. Yeah. If you can play around Nib and beat the Zeus this turn, it'll be crazy. Yeah, but I think if the Zeus stays on board this turn, he's just a little too far ahead. The discarding Neon off the Qinglong is very good. Yeah, it, it gives him an extra monster, so his opponent has to think the Zeus here. And I think now you're kind of forced to, but it looks like he only has one material under the Zeus. Yeah, he's just going to let this go. So Melvin might just be hoping that Kamal plays into the Nibiru. Yeah. But Kamal searching Chucha here shows that like he's not going to lose to any Zoo normal summon either way. Mm-hmm. And he has the Quinglong in the graveyard for a follow-up. If he has GG, I think he might just be able to wrap this game up, even though he looked like he was so far behind. Does the Zeus have another effect? The Zeus, because I don't think it has another material since he had Thoroughblade, Ram, Dryden. Dog. Yeah, because he detached the pop. Exactly. So he lost one of his materials there. And Kamal's just digging for more cards here. Yeah. So Kamal is on summon number four right now. So that's something we have to watch. Mm-hmm. It's kind of smart to nib before they get a nine in the graveyard, in my opinion, because that way you don't give them the avenue to Cloud Castle. Yeah, Cloud Castle is crazy. Yeah, also not being once per turn. So the people that are playing multiple Cloud Castles get to reap its effects a lot more often. Yeah. That card is just a free VFD. Yeah, like I think at this point Kamal is forced to make like a Vermilion or a Croc to deal with the Zeus, because if he doesn't deal with it this turn, it's just next turn, it's going to try and bait out any card he has, and it can just turn into another Zeus. Yeah. Without even committing a Zoo monster. Mm-hmm. So, it's probably going to go Synchro here. Definitely not just going to end on this. Yeah, and then, I just, I think Vermilion would probably be the correct play, but... I, d- I honestly don't know. Like, it just wholeheartedly depends on the rest of Kamal's hand which play he wants to commit towards. Yeah. 
this hand really does matter on what play to go for. Yeah, we and know he's he trying has to play through. Yeah, and we know he has Chuch in his hand as well. So like mm -hmm. that gives him a guaranteed like disruption. Yeah. So he's definitely factoring that in with the rest of his cards. So he's doing a lot of thinking. I mean, who knows? Maybe he's trying to make a game shot, or maybe he's trying to leave Melvin on as little cards as possible. Yeah. Having the Chuch is going to be extremely good, like you were saying. Yeah, I almost forgot about it for a second, but that, that card's just going to matter so much. And yeah. I think he does have Chuch in the graveyard right now, so he can just do the tall, the M7 play he did last game yeah. and just bounce the Zeus because it's another easy way to clear it and then just make his own Zeus. And yeah. that way he's not really committing more to a virtual world play, and he gives himself more follow-up. Yeah, it seems like he wants to use GG here. Yeah, so... The GG is great here because the GG is going to be summon number 5, so it'll resolve giving him Lulu back guaranteed. Yeah, he also has Qinglong and Grave and Chu Chi. If he gets stopped here, he has a lot of plays next turn still. Yeah, so he was making sure he probably had enough follow-up. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure this Nyan gets banished because it is a tuner right now. Yeah. I definitely think he knows that, though. Yeah, if Kamal did have access to Coral Dragon in his extra deck with all these cards known, he could have just gone for a VFD play with yeah. Shen Shen and the Trap card in the graveyard and Cloud Castle it back, which would have been good, obviously, not knowing the nib is in his hand. Yeah. So he's going to bring out Break Sword. And I think he's going to let the Break Sword resolve, so the nib is just less impactful. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Because now he's giving him a really big nib token yeah. since... It's going to be on, I think Breaksword has 600 defense or 500. Um, I think it's 1,000. 1,000? Okay, so it's going to be decently big on the defensive end, and its attack is over 5,000. Yeah. So it's going to be a really strong token. I think that was really weird to leave that. Maybe he just said end of main, though. Oh, he could have. to go for Zeus. He could have. That, that would have been a correct play to do also, like, if you want your nip token to be a lot bigger. Yeah. And we see one of those uh, Baby Yoda tokens being thrown <laughs> out there as a nip token. It's pretty cool. If you want to enter a giveaway for uh, some Among Us tokens, some custom PPG ones, all you have to do is just keep talking and chat, and we'll give it away at the end of each round. Yeah, and we're going to have uh, seven rounds today, so there's going to be a couple more opportunities to go ahead and win one, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it in the next round. So, side deck cards for VW is kind of weird, in my opinion, because you either side for the VFD or you side for Chucha, and you can't really side for both since they do such different things. Yeah. And it just very much depends on what your specific deck loses to in that matchup. Yeah. see a lot of people's side deck cards like Skullmeister, DD Crow, trying to stop the Chinglong. Yeah, Trying exactly. to stop them from starting. Th those are good cards. Also, I've seen a lot of people play Bell now because... People are trying to do the Chao Feng play, which gets yeah. you Lao Lao, and you can just bell Lao Lao in hand, mm -hmm. and then they're left with nothing, yeah. and they can't even chew chip pop. So that's really strong as well. Yeah, Bell's also very strong if you're playing a deck like Zoo because of Ice Dragon's Prison. Yeah, it's really good. People forget that Ice Dragon's special summons from the graveyard. It doesn't just banish too, which Bell can also interact with, but yeah. it's great. And also, you can't um, use Ice Dragon's Prison under the Majesty's Fiend, which I've seen people try to do as well. Mm-hmm. I think Melvin's noticing that, like, the Chucha set's going to be a real big issue right now. Yeah. I think Kamal should have uh, activated... Er, he didn't have any Virtual Worlds on the field when he got nipped, because some people forget that you can chain the Trap card during the main phase just to get an additional banish. Yeah. <laughs> he discarded the wrong yeah. cards. Kamal just pushed it back into his hand slowly. That was funny. Okay, so having Lord here is kind of big, I think. Because yeah. if he has access to a zoo monster now... Oh, is that Barrage in his hand? That, that's Barrage wow, that, Bunny Blast. That's actually insane. Barrage Bunny Blast is crazy because yeah. the Bunny Blast is just going to get him back another zoo. He can put Dryden yeah. back in his extra deck if he really wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then Kamal probably doesn't have another hand trap. Yeah, Barrage Bunny Blast. Yeah, that's nice. And then this guarantees him a follow-up, which is crazy. I think you'd add Ram Ram here. Yeah, because you want... You, you want to be able to normal summon into a Chuche. Yeah, he's actually putting back Dryden. Dryden. Okay, that makes sense to not Chalkanine it back. He might be wanting to Chalkanine something else back. Yeah. 
He could also just attach the Ram Ram with a Tiger Mortar now if he really wanted to. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like it's safer for follow-up plays, 100%. Yeah, me too. Or this Whiptail could have just been a Ram Ram as well, and that way he could just add one back to his hand, and he could just play around Chucha that way. Yeah. We could see the Whiptail be used to out the Nib token. Yeah, I, I think that's how it's going to be used. Still playing around the Nib. It's going to dry and pop it. So he doesn't want to take the damage. So he's probably just going to swing right now for 12 and then make Zeus over it, most yeah. likely. And this is another reason why I probably would have had the Bunny Blast add back a monster, because when you Zeus, you're going to be losing your barrage. Yeah. He just used Oh, he Lord used Lord's back. Effect. Is he oh, is this his game? game? So that's 35, and that's going to be 28. Is that yeah. game, or is this just pushing a lot of damage? He did take damage before from the Conquistador. Yeah, he did game. He did Conquistador in the 2300 yeah. from the Dryden. Wow, yeah. Melvin was able to pull that back just with some swift attacks and committing to the board. The Lord effect was so nice there. Outing the Chuchi and putting a 35 guy on board was nice. Yeah, I think he had the Lord in his hand from opening turn because he really didn't do anything with it. Yeah. That yeah. can be a card that's stuck in your hand for a while. Yeah, but that was a crazy game. I honestly thought Kamal was in control of it for the most part. It looked like yeah. he was activating his plays, getting his thing started. Even though he got nibbed, he left himself with a good follow-up. Chucha mm -hmm. uh, face down so he can destroy cards. He also had access to Quinglong and Lulu in his hand. So there was just a lot of plays he had. And Melvin like saw that he could not give Kamal another turn. Yeah. He just had to figure out how to kill him. And he figured it out. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that life was so low. So he just had to dry and pop it and summon the Lord. And yeah. then Barrage was just crazy because it gave him the extra spell card mm -hmm. to send for Lord as well. Yeah, that was nice. That was like the perfect combination of cards to go for game there. Yeah, exactly. The Bunny Blast too to put the Dryden back exactly. as well so it could use its effect. Yeah, it was just crazy. Yeah, that that was like so nice. Like the Bunny Blast to add back effect. A lot of people don't even know it can do that. Yeah, uh, so that's why like looking at old cards like we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier, you just have to know all their effects. Yeah. Like, Bunny Blast can add back Barrage if it wants yeah, to. Yeah, that's the crazy part. And I thought, like, that was really cool about normal summoning Rat. It doesn't only give you, like, the Ram Ram play where you can make Mega Clops. You can also just go, like, dry it end with Rat in hand again so you have another follow-up. Yeah, I really like that play. Yeah, I like that play a lot if you're playing Pure Zoo because you want to ensure a follow-up. If you're playing, like, the more, uh, like, engine part of Zoo, you don't really need that as much because yeah. you have supporting engines to help you play past turn one. Yeah. So you see people in chat talking, he said Nib swings games. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, we saw that Nib was just so impactful that game because it gave Melvin the one turn he needed to just put out enough damage. And he, he clearly knew that the token's attack didn't matter from what he had in hand. Yeah. At a regionals before, I had two rounds in a row where I won both games with strictly Nib. Oh, I've <laughs> done that before too where I've just like, I've gotten Nibbed and won because of it because my opponent could mm -hmm. not out the token. Yeah. And that's just, it's an insane feeling that, like, you did your best and your opponent stopped you and you just killed them with their card. Yeah. So, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I'd be mad if I lost yeah, to my I, own it's, token. It's happened to me also where, like, you just don't draw the out or different things like that. Or yeah. It's happened also where I forget my opponent's going second and I nib them. Mm -hmm. So, like, I put my nib in attack position they just summon a Boral Sword. Yeah. So, different things like that. We got yep. 500 viewers Wow, shout right out now. to all of you guys showing up for this. This is insane. <laughs> We're all we're all so happy to have you guys out here. Make sure to share the stream. Let your friends know. We got some very good players on here right now going to game three. Yeah, just make sure you guys let everyone know. We want to see this uh, chat packed for Top Cut. And if you guys do have any uh, recommendations, you want specific matchups that you guys want to see, feel free to let us know so we can go ahead and look for them. Yep. And it looks like they're finishing up their side decking now. Um, Kamal going first, so we haven't seen the virtual world deck go first. Yeah. So how do you think this is going to go? Do you think it's just going to be a bunch of hand traps thrown at Kamal, or do you think Melvin's going to be more reserved, like summon a zoo, make Dryden, set four, and pass? I feel like it's going to be one hand trap thrown at him, but I still feel like he's going to throw up VFD. Yeah, I think the virtual world deck puts up at least one VFD fairly consistently, even through like a hand trap. Yeah, like if he puts up VFD Choo Choo with like follow-ups... I think the game's over, but there's also not that much time left. So yeah, he has so, to be able to combo quickly. So Kamal's going to have to combo quickly and then be able to like push damage. Because that's one issue that the virtual world deck does have. Where, like, yeah. It can summon VFD consistently, but it has mm -hmm. an issue putting up like 8k off a blank field. Yeah. 
So it, it'd be interesting. Kamal might be aware of this and just make Melvin go first since that deck doesn't have a lot of disruption going first outside of like the hand traps really. Like Dryden Kong is really the most things you care about since Aquero doesn't negate Quinglong. Like if you have access to another one, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Shout out to Calvin from Team APS. Said what's up. Yeah, what's up, Calvin? Nice to have uh, other YouTubers out here. Yep. So, does the chat have any specific uh, decks that they think are going to win this event? If they think something else besides the Drytron in the virtual world? Does anyone else think that maybe Zoo's going to take it or Eldritch or maybe even a Rogue pick? Yeah, some random deck like Dragon Maid. Yeah, Dragon Maid's doing really well. Hopefully, he's 3-0 after this run. We'll go ahead and talk to him and see if we can maybe get him back for Top Cut for you guys. Yeah. Now we got the match going on. Uh, they both drew their opening hand, so I think Kamala is going first. No reason why he wouldn't want to. Yeah. I see a Nyan and a couple spells in his hand. It kind of looks like an, an Ash. ash. Yeah. yeah. So if it's Ash and Nyan, that's not very good. Unless he has like Foolish Burial Goods, then he can at least play. Yeah. So it looks like Chinglong, City, Ash, Nyan, and then one random spell. So that, that spell obviously was not enough since he just passed turn. And yeah. this is the issue that Virtual World does have. Yep. Oh, Normal Summon a Zoo. One of the best openings this deck has. Yep. If he swings and then activates Eldlin, that's just going to be so strong. Yeah. Getting damage in here, too, is really big. Yeah, making sure he gets damage in. There is more time than the three minutes that you guys see. Uh, we don't know exactly how much time, but there is more than three minutes. Yeah, it'll probably be around seven to ten minutes, I would think. A little yeah. bit like that. So we see he's committing a lot to this play. He summoned the four times to swing first. Yeah. So he just really wants to make this Zeus have as many materials as possible, which mm -hmm. is totally understandable. Yeah, not afraid to nib at all. It is game three. Yeah, and he's playing around Geonome. Yeah. yeah love to see it. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. I think this is just going to put him so far ahead, honestly. Yeah. And then this also gives him the ability to conquistor the uh, the Quinglong if he goes ahead and tries to negate the Zeus, which is one of the few outs the virtual deck does have to Zeus turn one. Yeah. Yeah, this is looking really good from him. Yeah, Melvin's looking like he's pretty far ahead. We can't even see the rest of his hand, and it's already strong. The rest of his hand, I don't think... Ma like, this gives him three disruptions, like, g these two cards on its own. Yeah. See, I saw two other spells, a trap, and a monster in his hand. So Could have a hand trap. Yeah, most likely a hand trap. I would imagine he'd side in a couple. I don't think it's Nib because I don't think he would have committed as big on the Zeus play and probably would have gone for a Dryden play if it was the Nib. Yeah. Let's see. So the other back row most likely is going to be either a Scarlet, I would like to say. Yeah, probably. Since he didn't like pop his own curse that turn to get to it. Kamal starting with Quan Loon. Looks like he's laughing. They're having a good old time playing some Yu-Gi-Oh. You love to see it. Yeah, you never want. So that's actually something you cannot do. So since Quan Loon mm -hmm. face, places the card face up, it would not actually be able to go into that zone. Yeah, it's like trying to trap trick into the same yeah, zone. I don't. I doubt it'll matter right now. Yeah, he could have just put yeah. it all the way to the left or all the way to the right and it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, but it's just something for you guys to be aware of in the chat so you don't make those same mistakes because those can definitely come up. Yeah. So, like, now he's facing the position where he either has to Zeus or he has to have, like, a response to the Quinglong because I think losing the Zeus here is just so bad. Yeah, we saw this exact thing happen last game. Yeah, th literally the same two cards force the Zeus every time. And yeah. I think this is just a lot more painful for Melvin this time because he's losing not only a Zeus effect but three back row. Yeah. If I was Melvin, I would want to kind of think quickly here. I'd think about letting it go through. It all just depends on what his other back row is besides the Conquistador. Yeah. If it's just like Aquero, then okay, I can let it go. Th mm -hmm. I'll use my Zeus effect. If it's a card like Torrential or like Ice Dragon's Prison, which I think can swing the matchup in my favor, I definitely don't want to activate Zeus right here. Yeah. Especially since it plays into Talons, which like is crazy right now because if he just goes Talons, take the Zeus, swing for 3k, he's ahead in life, makes his own Zeus. Yeah. 
Oh, and it looks like he sent double droplet. Again. So he did the same thing. He tried to keep the trap in his hand. So you can see Kamal's laughing that uh, Robin <laughs> opened multiple droplets again. Yeah, you love to see it. Okay, so now it's on Kamal to be able to play. He has four cards left, so it's definitely manageable, and he has a Quinglong in the graveyard, so he's yeah. able to get to a name. Just depends on the rest of his hand. Honestly, if he has talents to steal... I think the game's over if he yeah, has talents. Because that's just so much damage. Not even just that. I think just the Zeus itself applies so much pressure versus the Zoo deck. Yeah. Being able to get ahead in life points and have a way to interrupt the opponent would be huge here. And then it plays around most hand traps too because you can't ask the talents to take control. You can't Nibiru him because he hasn't even summoned more than once. Yeah. So it just put him so far ahead. Yeah. Adds Lulu here. Obviously, best card in the deck. Yeah, he does have a Nian in hand that he could discard. Yeah, the Nian would be really nice right now. So this is where I think it's going to matter that they know how much time is left in the round because as we see, that the main event is already in time. Yeah. Oh, there oh. we. Yeah. So we have two and a half minutes left in this round. So this is big. So Melvin showing like his knowledge, making sure he uses the Zeus effect to clear the talents. So yeah. Kamal doesn't get any free materials. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And he had another knight. Oh, no. Did he discard off the Quinglong? Uh, he did discard, but couldn't see what it was. Okay, just making sure he did discard a card. Mm -hmm. So I think Kamal just has this game now, with especially with so little time left. He's probably going to be able to put up anywhere between 6,000 and 8,000 damage this turn. And Melvin's only at 72 because he did use Cursed Effect last turn. Yeah. So he's not ahead by much. And then this is just going to give him the avenue to make any level 6 or 9 synchro he wants and summon a Zeus. Yeah. So he's, like, very close to yeah. game. Yeah, he's very close to game, and I think that he's trying to plot out his whole play in his head while he's resolving Lulu's effect so you can make sure he's able to do it through disruption. And you see how he searches Chu Chi, like, mm -hmm. to make sure he has a follow-up. Sending another Quinglong to make sure he has another follow up. Yeah, even if he can't go for a game, like he's gonna have interruptions. Yeah, like the Chucha itself is just so strong unless your opponent has Ram Ram. Yeah. They said Melvin has Nib in hand though. Yeah, so this is where it's gonna be really important to see if Kamal plays around the Nib and go into yeah. battle phase first. Yeah, I mean he's gonna yeah, he's, I hope yeah, he plays around I, it. I hope he goes into battle phase. I personally would have probably gone into battle phase just with the Zeus to guarantee it. Mm -hmm. And then just play main phase two knowing you have such little time. Because you can't be constantly just time, time, time. And it's not like you're on your DB account where you... There you go. You see him mm -hmm. going into the battle phase. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's probably going to be the match right here. But it's nice. I want to see what Kamal is going to be able to do past this main phase to see if it would have mattered. Might just make break sword into Zeus, play around Nib. Yeah. But then the opponent would get his Zeus back. Oh, Gossip Shadow. Okay, that's that's a good way to play around the Nib as well. Yeah. Well, I don't even think he's gonna play into it. There you go. He has four summons. I'm just gonna pass and give back his Zeus. Yeah, the Zeus on board just doesn't matter. Yeah, getting Scarlet set. Uh, this is good if the game was lasting a lot longer. The Scarlet would have been really nice, especially yeah. because we know he has another Conquistador in his hand. Mm -hmm. and it looks like he has a Quero in his hand as well. And draws Ash for turn. Oh, that's not good. Wow, you hate to see that. His hand is just full of Ash, Nibiru, and Conquistador, and it looks like a second Nibiru. Yeah. Damn, you hate to see it. Yeah, a lot of hand traps. There we go. Me. That's the match. I, I think it's the match. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> they did a handshake. Yeah, they did a handshake, so <laughs> kind of teasing us there a little bit. But the writing's mostly on the walls here. I don't really think there's a feasible way for Melvin to come back. We know all his cards. Yeah. There's just no way to out the Zeus. There's no way to force Zeus or the Conquista or the Chucha set. Yeah. Unless. Unless, <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless one of those cards turns into Desires and draws, I don't even know at this point. Yeah. Like, you... You'd have to draw, like, three cards based on Melvin's hand. And and he's noticing that he really can't do much. Yeah. Yeah, and being smart, saving his banish to just pop Conquistador that he knows is in Melvin's hand still. Mm-hmm. We're going to see Ching Long here. His turn's going to be able to take long enough. Yeah, so I, 
I don't think Kamal loses this game either way. Oh, yeah. Time yeah. didn't even matter. Here. Time wasn't a factor here. It may have made them do different plays. Yeah, 100% it would have made you play differently, but that's just something that like happens when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! And, yeah, that's the match, guys. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably the best match we've seen so far.